F1. Here, two teams headed by Botham and Beaumont play ball in half an hour. First on BBC One, Cutting the Risk, this November the 5th. Over the next few nights, millions of us will be enjoying ourselves at fireworks displays and bonfire parties, and we all want to remember, remember the 5th of November as a time of fun and laughter. But last year's bonfire night injury figures were the worst for 20 years. Now, we don't want to be damned squibs, but unfortunately, it only takes one moment's carelessness for somebody to be hurt and for everybody's evening to be ruined. We're devoting the whole of tonight's programme to highlighting ways to help make your bonfire night a success. Now, if you've been listening to BBC Local Radio this week, you may have heard about the offer of our free leaflet produced by 999 and the Department of Trade and Industry. Its slogan is Be Safe, Not Sorry, and it contains information about the firework code and also advice on what to do if something goes wrong. It shouldn't cost you anything and should be available in all shops selling fireworks and also BBC local radio stations across the country. And throughout the programme, we'll be backing up the information in the leaflets in our own way. Last year in the UK, we bought more than 100 million fireworks. That's £40 million worth. The most dangerous place to be on fire night is in your own back garden. There were more than 600 accidents last year at small private parties. That's three times as many than at large public displays. Fireworks are fun if they're used safely, but remember they're explosives and come under many of the same laws as dynamite and TNT. Selling fireworks to anyone who appears to be under 16 is illegal and you could be fined up to £5,000 under the Explosives Act. Throwing fireworks in the street or any other public place is also a criminal offence, which carries another £5,000 fine. Try to buy your fireworks from an established shop. Despite some recent changes in the law, shops still have to be registered to sell them and meet strict guidelines on how they're stored and displayed. And always look for the British Standard Number, BS7114. It should be on every firework or box of fireworks you buy. Although the focus of attention in November is on the danger of fireworks, far too many injuries on bonfire night result from the bonfire itself. Now, the safety precautions for bonfires apply to the sort of fires you might light in the garden at any time of year. But on bonfire night, there are far more people around, and there's the added pressure of not wanting to disappoint people. When Terry Thatcher helped out at a bonfire party at his local pub in Bedfordshire last year, not wanting to disappoint people nearly cost him his life. In our reconstruction, the adults are played by actors, but the children take part as themselves. Big explosion, bang. Ten times out on the gunshot. It's the loudest noise I've ever heard. And it made me frightened. They just couldn't get the bonfire to light last year. It had been very wet. I wish I'd hurry up. It's taking ages. It's like really wet and there was nothing to do and we was just standing around. It was really boring. Look, you just gotta be patient, it won't be long. Uncle Terry's doing the best he can out there. It's wet. Okay. All right, it won't be long. We've been waiting about an hour, wait, waiting for them to, to light the bonfire. Now hurry up! What's wrong with your sparklers? Are they enough for you? Who wants a sparkler? Yeah. Yeah. All right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Terry is the one person that all the kids love. Now be careful with it. He is one of life's nice guys, really. And he adores the children. He would do anything for the kids. Come on! Oh, look, it's been about an hour now. I've got an idea! <laughs> When he started putting the petrol on the bonfire, I started to get like, a bit scared and I didn't say anything. I, 
thought it'd like be all right, but I wish I had now. I know absolutely nothing about the dangers of lighting bonfires, so I thought he was he was in control and he knew what he was doing. And he did know what he was doing. But we pushed him to make one vital mistake. Soon be on up the cook on. Luckily, there was a nurse at the party that night. Stay here! Don't any of you move! He was very still. I actually thought he was dead. And I was quite panicking at this point, thinking we've got a garden full of children and somebody down the garden has died. <laughs> and then, thank goodness, he got up. Come on, you're all right. It's OK. Come on, that's it. Shall I stay the water? No, don't! Well, what shall I do? Uh, just get him into the kitchen. I said to her, no, I thought it might be a bit too much of a shock for Terry. Terry, that's it. Come on. You're okay. He looked bad, and he was, like, all black. And um, I've never seen someone like that before, and it made me frightened and worried about him. Fill the sink up, quick. <laughs> I'm just going to take your jacket off, Terry. That's it. How full do you want it? As full as possible. And can you find me some towels? Right, OK. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Good. Yes, Come on, I'll get some towels. And your T-shirt. And can you switch the light on? <laughs> right. And the next thing I thought, God, the kids. So while Corinna got everything under control in the kitchen, I shut the door, went outside, <laughs> grabbed all these chocolates off the shelf. Come on, then, everyone. Who wants a bar of chocolate? Maria goes, chocolate bars. And um, everybody goes, <laughs> would you like? The Mars bar, the Twix, or Kit Kat, or all three. I was thinking, all three, thank you. you Took my mind off of things for a couple of minutes. It cheered me up a bit, but it didn't take my mind off Uncle Terence. That's it. That's it. <laughs> right. Good, good. I started to tip all through over his head and down his back and over his chest, and his skin started to all blister. The blisters were awful. I asked for the towels, um, knowing that they hold water and I could keep those against his skin and they'd cool off sort of a larger area. That's it, Terry. Just keep it good and cool. You're doing fine. You're doing great. He was so hot. The towels kept drying and I just kept soaking them and putting them back on again. My face. What about my face? In my heart, I thought he looked awful. You'll be fine. Uh, I'd never seen burns like this, and I was really worried. And everything was going as, as, as the children had expected it to go. They expected to have fireworks. The bonfire was alight. So they got their bonfire. All that was missing was the fireworks. We had some, like, big bangers and we liked them, but oh, it still didn't take my mind off Uncle Terence. Terry was taken to hospital suffering from second-degree burns. I think the fact of being helpless to help him was one of the hard parts in my heart. I felt terribly, terribly guilty. If only... If only we hadn't been at the pub, if only the kids weren't there, none of this would have happened. And I know that Terry would never have made a mistake if it wasn't for them children stood there. The reason he died was because of the kids. I thought I was going to let the children down. I just couldn't face that. I, I, I just didn't want them to be disappointed with it. And it was that that led me to do something silly. The can was almost empty. All of a sudden, there was just a big bang. I could smell burnt skin and burnt hair. I could feel my arms actually blistering and, and burning in the flames. Um, at, at that point, I really thought that I was going to die. Um, I could almost picture myself falling through the middle of the bonfire and being stuck in the middle of it. 
I remembered the 999 program that I'd seen a few months earlier. Um, for some reason it just flashed into me, roll on the grass or rolling something. I was very surprised how quickly the flames went out, it just, it just stopped straight away. I think the fact that Corinne was there certainly saved me from being very, very badly disfigured. I think she saved my life. The recovery that I've made since coming out of hospital really has amazed everybody that uh, saw how bad I was at the time. My arms were, were, were very, very badly injured. Uh, they're, they're, they're pretty much um, healed now. My face was, was very bad. Um, Benjamin wouldn't actually come near me for over a week because it, it just frightened him so much. Um, I, I think really that was the, the most upsetting part at the time was the fact that uh, he didn't want to know who I was. Um, but as you can see, he's, he's fine now. Hey, give me a daddy hug. Daddy hug. Boy. I know how very close I was to killing myself. And that's very difficult to say with it being such a stupid thing to do anyway. Um, but it, it just frightens me to think that somebody else may do that and, and not be so lucky. Bonfires are dangerous. The best advice is don't have one. But if you must, light it after your firework display and make sure it's safe. First, check you have enough room. Build it at least 18 metres away from any buildings, fences or trees and look for overhead cables. Good construction is the key to a successful bonfire. Build it evenly so it doesn't fall over. Use dry newspaper inside and twigs or pieces of wood on the outside. Never put foam-filled furniture, aerosols or batteries onto your bonfire. They give off toxic fumes and could even explode. Before you light a bonfire, always check to make sure there are no animals inside. Two years ago, more than 20 pets died in bonfires, so keep them indoors. Never use petrol to help get a fire going. As we saw from Terry's experience, it isn't worth the risk. Domestic fire lighters will do the same job and are much safer. Remember, never leave your bonfire unattended, and afterwards, always put it out with water. There's one group of people for whom bonfire night will never be the same again. They're the 450 people who sustained eye injuries last year, more than half of whom suffered significant or permanent loss of vision. It isn't just the people larking around with bangers who are affected. Often it's innocent spectators who just happen to be looking upwards at the wrong time, perhaps at a rocket and get hit by the falling debris. We're going to show you what it would be like if something like that happened at your bonfire party. It's particularly distressing if it's a child that's hurt, and eye injuries require prompt, very prompt attention. So if you had to cope with that kind of accident, would you know what to do? OK, boys, you stay there. I'm just about to light them, OK? Just give me a minute. Come on, Dad, we want to see the rockets! Oh, look at that! It's cool. Get him indoors as quickly as you can. You can't help him if you can't see the problem. Daddy, He's got something in his eye. Is he going to be all right, Dad? What are we going to do? You need to lie him down on his back. What could all that do? It'll help reduce his panic and calm him down. OK, we've done that. So now what? Support or cradle his head so that it's as still as possible. You must stay calm. It's a very distressing situation for the child, and the calmer you are, the calmer he'll be. Don't worry. <laughs> he needs to keep his eyes still. Ask him to keep his uninjured eye on one thing in the room, because if he keeps moving the uninjured eye, he may damage the other one more. OK, Danny, look, just look up at the ceiling. Don't look round at Dad or Aura. Now, you need to assess how serious the situation is, so see if he'll let you have a look in his eye. Let's see, Danny. No! If he can't open it for you, don't force him to. It may be a serious injury. What? But what does that mean? Should we try and wash it out? No, no, because there might be something embedded in his eye. Never wash a wounded eye, as it could cause further damage. So we shouldn't get it out, then? No, no. If it's actually stuck in the eye, it'd be the worst possible thing. You might end up damaging the eye permanently. Well, what can we do, then? Cover his affected eye with something sterile, nothing dirty which might cause infection. 
If you've got a first aid box, then get it. If they're well stocked, they're essential in emergencies like this. Use an eye bandage if there is one. Here, here, use this. It's important to keep reassuring him while this is going on. Let him know what you're doing. Come on. There you are, Danny. Good boy. <laughs> Just going to put this on here. Yeah? Make sure the eye is properly covered. If you haven't got an eye bandage, then a sterile pad and a headscarf will do the job too. Mum's right here. Don't and don't cover both of his eyes. It causes unnecessary distress, especially in children. That's great, Danny. You're doing fine. Now, get him to casualty or a hospital with an eye department. You could call an ambulance or drive yourself, but getting him there quickly and safely is the most important thing for an eye injury. Half of all eye injuries caused by fireworks happen to children under 16. So if you're concerned about your family, it might be worth getting hold of these DIY goggles or the cardboard glasses that you can get in some boxes of fireworks. On the back of our leaflet, there's some basic advice on first aid for burns and what to do if somebody's clothing catches fire. The rule there is stop, drop, Wrap and roll. Stop what you're doing, drop onto the ground, wrap yourself up in something like a coat or a blanket and roll over to put out the flames. The leaflet's also got advice on accident prevention. If you can't get one from your fireworks stockist, then copies are kept at all BBC local radio station receptions. Store fireworks in a closed box. Keep them locked away somewhere cool and dry until you need them. Always prepare in daylight. It's much safer. Make sure you only have one adult in charge of the fireworks. It'll stop any confusion on the night. If the fireworks need to be pushed into the ground but it's too hard, use buckets filled with sand or soil. Some fireworks need to be on a level surface, so use a flat board for them. It's dangerous to mix fireworks and alcohol. Always wait until the display is over. Never put fireworks in your pocket. If they ignite, they're almost impossible to put out. Different fireworks have different instructions. Read each firework carefully beforehand. At night, always use a torch, never a naked flame. Light your fireworks using a long taper at arm's length and stand well back. Always have a bucket of water handy to douse any dud fireworks and at the end of the night, douse and bury the used ones. Finally, never go back to a firework once lit. It's just not worth the risk. One of the reasons why you need to be so careful with fireworks is that they're made of gunpowder, which means they're designed to burn and keep burning. If anything goes wrong, they're virtually impossible to put out. The damage they can cause doesn't just last a night or even a week. It can take years and years of painful surgery and treatment to repair. And it's not just the physical damage. In our next story, David Brooks was just 15 when he broke one of the most basic safety rules at a firework party near Manchester. It blasts in, just like a bomb explosion. David! I was just thinking, I've got to get it out quick, I've got to stop it. What did I? Oh! I, I couldn't believe that he'd actually done it. Hi. Tom? Glad you could make it. You said you was coming. Yeah, we've got some fireworks. In this reconstruction, David and his best friend, Tom Williams, are played by actors. Okay. Thanks a lot. OK, Thanks. see you in a bit. David loved fireworks. It, that was a highlight of the year for him. Bonfire night was fireworks. <laughs> this really was the first time that he'd um, asked to go out to somewhere where there was going to be a bonfire and fireworks, and I, we weren't going to be with him. He'd always had it drummed into him never to touch them never to go near them, you know, never to put them in his pockets. I remember feeling really funny inside and thinking, God, I hope he's all right. There was a group of us, about 14, 15 year olds, who were all friends from school. We were discussing the normal things that you discuss when you're that age, football, girls, etc. We saw it as an opportunity to get away from our parents and uh, pretend to be fairly grown up, really. When the fireworks started, um, David was very excited. 
Yeah, let's go and see if we can help out with them fireworks. Come on, come on. The fireworks were properly stored well away from the bonfire in the kitchen. We took the precautions to make it as safe as possible by putting all the fireworks that people had brought down in tins. David, please be careful with those. Of course I will. That was my last words to David. I thought he was going out with the tin. But obviously he didn't. David had put some fireworks in his pocket, and they were still there. I'm not really sure what happened. It could have been a spark from the fire, we could have been sitting too close, it could have been anything. David, you left! <laughs> David! David! I got up and ran after him, and I noticed, you know, the sparks getting bigger and things flying out. That was when I realised that there were fireworks in his pocket. I couldn't really believe that anyone could be that stupid. There was a lot of fear, you know, a lot of panic and hoping that I don't get satellite. I was trying to put them out, trying to stamp on the fireworks, trying to make sure there was nothing left. But more and more fireworks were exploding all over the place. Give us some help quickly. They rushed David inside where it was light so they could see the damage. There's nothing wrong, Tom. David couldn't feel any pain because the fireworks had destroyed the nerve endings in his leg where they'd burned through his skin. As in every burn injury, his body was losing vital fluids. an ambulance or something, need to get to hospital quickly. Get someone to take him in the car, it's quicker. With being in the middle of nowhere, the ambulance might have taken a, a long time to come, so we decided to take him in the car. And then I had to do the deed of phoning his mum. I really expected him to be sat in casualty waiting to be seen with, with a bandage round his leg or something. Not knowing exactly how bad the burns were, but knowing that obviously he was, he was quite ill. It was just your worst nightmare. David had burns over 15% of his body, well above the critical level for someone of his age. He spent the first 36 hours in intensive care, while medical staff replaced the fluids he'd lost and tried to stabilise his worsening condition. When you see your child hurting so much, it just... it just hurts you and it's just awful. You just don't know what to do and you can't help them. He kept getting infections. Some of the children, it went pretty straightforward. They'd come in, heal up and go out. But David seemed to be there where all the other children were coming and going. In fact, it took doctors two weeks to clear David's wounds of infection. Only then could they start grafting skin from his uninjured leg onto his injury. It took two more operations over the next few months before the affected area started to heal. But that was just the beginning of a long, painful rehabilitation. When I first saw him, what I saw was an angry, upset, disturbed boy whose wounds would not heal. Emotionally, he was on the verge of clinical depression. You're going to be down the chippy next week, no problem. Come I on. nag them, if you like. They have got to do it, you know, they've got, they've got to get better. He just doesn't believe that Go he on. can do it. Come on. You're going to have to do it, David, in the end. That. Once he started healing physically, he started to heal emotionally. The best was just to keep practising. <laughs> she was just wonderful. I don't know how David would have coped at times without her. Come on, get on with it. Forget it took method. three years of regular treatment to get over that terrible mistake. I can remember rolling about the floor and thinking about I'm in trouble. Not that I'm on fire, but my mum's going to kill me. I had it drummed into me over the last 11 years not to put fireworks into my pocket, and I'd gone and done it. It was a case of get as many as you can, cos, you know, I, I, I didn't really want to go back, to be honest. It was just panic, trying to get, get them out. And um, I tried to get them out of my hand, but it was, I had no chance, really. I had no idea how serious 
the, the injury was. At the time, it didn't click that something like that could cause you to die, but um, I, now, I now know that, that I could have died that night. You don't mess with fireworks. They're bombs. And if you do mess with fireworks, these are the consequences. She's just brilliant. It's just impossible to explain, but... She gives, gives you a kick up the backside. She, she tells you that you, you're going to get better. When I started to think like that, almost overnight, they started to... Things started to happen. I started to heal. David has realised his potential. His terrible injury, his terrible experience, has not stopped him from being the thing that he would have been before he was injured. <laughs> Look at you, you're doing really well. Thanks. Your legs terrific. I really love you, you're terrific. I'm I had a period where I was really angry, thinking, how could he have put fireworks in his pocket? I could not believe that my son would put three fireworks in his pocket. But there you go. You don't have to be a little criminal. Ordinary girls and boys and men and women get firework injuries, and that's the bottom line. And David's here telling you, don't play with bombs. End of story. More than 1,500 people were injured in the UK last year, and they all needed some kind of hospital treatment. Two died, so if you don't think fireworks can be dangerous, think again. Bangers and rockets were responsible for nearly a third of all injuries. More than 200 people were seriously hurt in the street or other public places when fireworks were thrown or misused. Don't forget that sparklers are fireworks too. They cause as many injuries as bangers or rockets. Wear gloves when handling sparklers and never give them to children under five. People do. Last year, nine babies were injured by them. Three sparklers held together are as hot as a welding torch, so always plunge used ones into a bucket of water to stop children picking them up while they're still hot. More adults injure themselves with sparklers than small children, so take care. Fireworks are only as safe as the people who use them. OK, Mr Burke, stop no. eating. No. Get working. No. No. Now, we hope that nothing we've said on this programme will stop anyone from enjoying Bonfire Night. If you're off to a public display, then no doubt the organisers will have put a lot of thought and planning into the whole event and, of course, thinking about people's safety. If you're having your own informal party at home, though, Thank the you. arrangements obviously are up to you and make sure that everybody knows and obeys the rules. The key is to be aware of the dangers, Thank plan you. to avoid them and then stick to the plan. Children, of course, need extra supervision, but as we've seen, adults are perfectly capable of abandoning caution and doing something they absolutely know to be stupid, like trying to talk to the, <laughs> trying to talk to the camera while cooking hamburgers. Well, I think that's probably enough talking for now. So have a really safe and happy bonfire night. Good night. Good night. Next week, the windsurfer lost at sea for 18 hours. And drunk or poisoned, would you know the difference? And 999 Young Lifesavers explains what to do in emergency situations.